on the deadly wave of tornadoes that swept across multiple states over the weekend. The damage is immense, and at least 33 people were killed between Friday and Sunday. The twisters hit hardest over a huge area, from Illinois to Alabama all the way to Delaware. One county in Tennessee reported nine deaths. Arkansas has declared a state of emergency. Five people died there. Omar Villafranca is in the capital of Arkansas, where there is considerable damage. Omar, good morning. Good morning. More than 50 people in the Little Rock area were injured when an EF3 tornado rolled through here. That's wind speeds of up to 165 miles an hour. And check out this damage. The roof is gone. The walls are knocked down. Even the street steel structure here uh, has basically been bent. This was all part of a system that rolled through the south and the Midwest. Over the weekend, the deadly storm system ravaged communities from Iowa Two tornadoes on the ground. to Delaware. This is crazy. Around 260 people were inside of this packed heavy metal concert venue in Belvedere, Illinois Friday when an EF1 tornado with 100 mile per hour winds swept through, causing the roof to collapse. It just came in seconds. One person was killed and dozens of others were injured. The death toll was highest in Tennessee, where more than a dozen people died. Nine people were killed in rural McNary County. In Arkansas, a man captured the moment a tornado swept over his van outside Little Rock. Around 100 miles to the northeast, the small town of Wynn, Arkansas has been reduced to rubble. We knew all day something was coming. We didn't know it was gonna come directly for us. This is what's left of Curtis McNelly's house. This is my son's bedroom. He hid from the tornado in the hallway of his home with his two kids, wife and mother-in-law. And we're all just hunkered down praying, praying to God. That's when he says the wind ripped the roof off his house. My daughter, we told her to keep her head down, but she got her head up and she looked up and she told me she thought we were in heaven with angels. She thought it was over. She thought it was done. For a while, I did too. President Biden issued a disaster declaration for the state which should help free up recovery funds. And at last check, more than 13,000 customers are still without power. Natalie? Just devastating to see all that destruction. Omar, say. Fred weather system, take a look at this. Okay, so you see all of those purple boxes there, those uh, kind of moving purple parallelograms. Well, those are areas where there are tornado watches and warnings. Uh, and you can see how extensive this system is. It's not only centered in the southeast, it's been making its way to central uh, part of the country, also up to parts of Iowa and, and Illinois. So this is just a very, very, very wide, massive system that is making its way through uh, parts of the country at this point in time. Into Cross County, Arkansas, that's the town of Wynn is located. Some significant damage there. Will, back with you, looks like you're getting a little bit of rain. In fact, south of you, away from you, there is another confirmed tornado warning. Yeah, unfortunately, that rain complicating uh, ongoing search and rescue efforts. You can probably hear the sirens in the background behind me because this is still a, a very fresh emergency scene. We have uh, a call that has been made out that I understand from rescue officials here in this county to nearby areas asking for assistance with additional ambulances, uh, fire engines, and things like that. We take you around as uh, my colleague uh, Tony here kind of gives us a perspective from top the Fox Weather Beast. A lot of the damage you're seeing on camera right now in this direction is is from roof of the high school. Uh, the high school had let out earlier that day, I understand, about 1.30 in the afternoon, so there were not a lot of people, at, if at all, inside the high school. An additional shelter has just been set up at the junior high school here. But to, you know, kind of capture the sense of what's happening here, people are still somewhat in disbelief. This is, again, very, very fresh for this community. And so you have people trying to still get on crowded roadways and try to check on one another. You can see some of these neighbors out here on the street. They just had to bring in a bulldozer uh, to move off some of this stadium lighting. These poles from the football stadium had crashed onto the roadway. And so it took a bulldozer to move those out. And right behind me here uh, is where we're going to see a lot of the significant residential damage. And this is not the only area, but this is one of the most considerable that we have certainly 
certainly encountered to this point. Uh, and they're still trying to navigate to different parts of the community, Stephen. It's, of course, still too early to give you a sense of just how many injuries we're looking at here because there is still that active search and rescue mission. And, of course, these different elements playing on. You know, I have rain right now and I have a bright sun shining on me. So we still have all this energy developing. And you might be able to see over my shoulder here is a gigantic rainbow circling the wind water tower as all of this damage and all this kind of chaos from this town takes place underneath this rainbow right now. Uh, but uh, folks just telling me they're thankful that uh, they are able to walk out of their homes. I just spoke with a woman a few minutes ago who has her home destroyed, she says, but she was able to, to immediately get out and then start helping her neighbors. There is still a lot of that initial assessment happening right now, but significant damage to pass along here from when Stephen as we're still trying to really wrap our heads around all that has happened here in terms of how many homes have been affected, but lots of trees snapped, lots of structural damage. This was a powerful storm that came through this town, Stephen. The wind yellow jackets, as we've seen Will before we show some new video, we're here at the stadium. At that turf, that yeah. astro turf, that was lofted. I think that's an indication of those surface winds right at ground level. That, yes. that astro turf, that's what yes. you've seen that's been lofted into this neighborhood. Without a doubt. And then also lots of the roofing from the high school as well that has been brought into a lot of this neighborhood here. But significant damage uh, to these homes right here. And a lot of it is damage from the structure of the high school that's made its way across the town and into these homes. But there are not many homes out of at least the dozen I can see here in the distance behind me, Stephen, that have any sort of roof. Uh, these are brick homes that still sustained very considerable damage. And that's the things that we're going to be looking at later on the National Weather Service. We'll be looking at when they try to determine the strength of these storms and exactly the type of power that was on display here. But there are complete just piles of rubble, Stephen, in these homes. And we're seeing dozens and dozens of them. The path, from my perspective, is very clear. But this came over this high school here, went directly through this neighborhood. And so this is where emergency officials are trying to access right now to get into these homes and make sure everybody's okay. Yeah, I, I just hope that everyone is okay. Okay, there are initially some reports that people, as many as 12 people, were, were trapped in a place uh, close to where you're right. at. And, and, and looking at that rainbow, a lot of times it's, it's a good sign, but when you have it contrasting to, to this, it's devastating just to see yeah. what we've been dealing with and what the town of Wynn went through, the National Weather Service out of Memphis, as this storm was tearing through mentioned that perhaps an EF2, but we won't speculate on that, but that's what the Weather Service said as this tornado was in progress. And that damage we're looking at too, I'm sure you don't have the return of Will, but we're looking earlier, some, some images from storm trackers, when one of these trees completely uprooted, landing right on a home, it's devastating. just feet oh. from him. You can see the bolt hit the ground, causing the man to jump back. He threw his umbrella down, then quickly picked it back yeah. up and ran off. He says he felt the shock, but is just thankful wow. not to have any major injuries. 
This wow. thing. Wow. What a close call. He's so Look at that. close. Oh my wow, that's crazy. That had to be crazy. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Click the ABC7 logo to subscribe to our Eyewitness News YouTube channel. Rita Jackson, she's in Hamilton Township, New Jersey tonight, where there is some storm damage. Sure. Yeah, Walker, we drove around quite a bit. There's a lot of trash, a lot of tree limbs, but this is by far one of the biggest trees that we have spotted out here now. Now, this is a look at how powerful this storm was when it moved through the area. And you, again, you can tell by the size of this tree. It's blocking one lane of traffic, and at this point, crews, they are moving pretty fast to remove it. Again, we're at the corner of White House and Glocker in Hamilton Township. Now, while this may be an issue in some places, the bigger issue, of course, is this region is the power Power outages following the storm. Now, people are reporting more than 12,000 people in the dark. CSDG may have just under 13,000 without power. And AC Electric is reporting 4,100 in Delta. Rover says that they are nearly 5,000 people in the dark tonight. But back out here live, you see traffic is moving even though they are down to one lane on one side. They are able to move freely through here while the crews, they are working to get this tree out of the street. And it is partly in this person's yard as well. Again, just a look at some of the damage that we are seeing following this storm. We are going through the area. We're looking for more as well from live from Hamilton Township, Sharifa Jackson for Action News at 10 on PHL 17. Walter. All right, thank you, Sharifa. The powerful. I can't see Kyoto yet. I hope it doesn't hit it because it's freaking violent. It just hit something. This is literally one of the craziest tornadoes I've seen. It's literally like a, a big old wedge or a stovepipe underneath the collar cloud that's like... It's wedging out, it's wedging out. It went from a nice a drill bit to a, uh, it's, getting, it's getting ready to start wedging out again. Holy crap, dude. Insane collar cloud, it's coming all the way to the ground. Yeah. This is up there with one of those violent tornadoes I've seen.
One person has been killed, homes torn to pieces, and trees uprooted from the street. Saturday night, I'm Walter Perez, Big Story and Action News is the swath of storm that mowed through our area earlier tonight. So at least one person is dead after a tornado cuts down in southern Delaware. A lot of damage left in the state. We have live team coverage tonight. Action News reporter for Gary Gallagher, Susan Jackson, for Ben Kent. Meteorologist Chris Boyer will break down the storm in half. Again, the Kanata and Ken Grove, New Jersey. No storms quickly sweeped in here across Pennsylvania and New Jersey, where we are right now. However, Delaware seems to have been hit the hardest. Take a look at this video that viewers sent in to us here at Action News. Now, the National Weather Service confirms a tornado touched down in Bridgeville, Sussex County, Delaware, just after six o'clock tonight. Winds were moving east at about 50 miles per hour. Officials tell us that one person has died after they say a home collapsed as storms tore through Sussex. County, Delaware. Now taking a look at the aftermath from this viewer who just barely missed the tornado in Bridgeville. You can see a large tree that has fallen directly on a house. Several trees are completely uprooted, now scattered in every direction. We spoke with a woman who watched the severe weather sweep in. Luckily, she's okay tonight. Once I got down the highway a little bit more, I seen dirt flying up in the air and literally we were close to it and I didn't know it, I didn't realize it. And I seen all the cars pulling over, so I said, okay, let me pull over. So I look over to the right, and there where it, it had hit at. And I, I saw all the debris, trees, a tree had fell into the, the house. Now, officials in Delaware tell us there is widespread damage across the county there. For now, we're live in Pence Grove. Brianna Gallagher for Action News at 10 on PHL 17. Walter. All right, thank you, Brianna. I look We do have on the phone Zachary Hall. He's a professional storm chaser. Uh, and Zachary, do you have us? Thanks so much for being with us. You are down on the ground there. Do you have me? Yes, I think you can hear me okay. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, we're going to put up some of this video. These aerials over Little Rock, Arkansas, parts of Wynn, Arkansas. Uh, and you can just see the extent uh, of the damage. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You were in the middle of all this as it came through. What did you see? What did you hear? And I've had a not high my partner Frank Shepard. We've had a wild day. We've been struggling up the city, back to tornadoes. We were not on the Little Rock tornado. We wanted to avoid metro traffic. We did capture a tornado in the town of Cabot, which is in the north of Little Rock. We captured the wind tornado and then another uh, tornado in the town of Electra. Okay, you uh, followed this so extensively on your YouTube page uh, titled Vortex chasing um i wanted to get you on the line because not only there in arkansas but places like iowa places like illinois also uh, uh mississippi we are seeing so many of these systems at the very same time is that significant yeah i mean today in my opinion i've been doing this for a little bit now and this is the most expansive severe weather risk that we have ever uh, been involved with as a storm chaser goes uh I'm having two separate high risk areas from the National Weather Service at the level five of five. Uh, we haven't had that day as well. So this was a uh, a red letter day, if you would, for your weather service across the country. Yeah, and just when you survey the extent of the damage, uh, we have a tweet from you, a video of one of these follow clouds. You can see the tornadic activity very, very clearly. The strength of the storms uh, today that we have seen, very, very strong. These are not your, uh, you know, I guess, run-of-the-mill uh, tornadoes that really don't touch down, that just have tornadic activity up in the air. These were massive twisters, right? Yeah, I mean, today, as the National Weather Service forecasted, uh, the potential for strong, long-track tornadoes, intense supercells that are, you know, that can produce tornadoes that are on the ground for long periods of time, not something that spins up and goes away in five or ten minutes. So, yeah, I mean, today, particularly in Kansas, for sure, the region. And you know, Zach, uh, we were covering President Biden and the First Lady's trip to, to Rolling Fork, Mississippi today. At the very same time, all of this, all of this was happening uh, in places like Wynn, Arkansas, in places like Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, you know, when you see this with such regularity, with such frequency, I know this is spring, I know the storms are going to be there, uh, but is this increasing in frequency? Is this picking up? Uh, it just, I guess, give me your perspective. You do this for a living. 
yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm no climatologist, but it, it definitely seems as if at least the you know, late winter pattern is in the spring and have frequently. Uh, you could ask my wife, it's like I've been gone for the last several weeks and I wasn't here before. Uh, whether or not it's directly due to climate change or just, uh, you know, an active pattern off the West Coast, uh, I'm not really going to get into that, but it, it certainly seems as if it's happening more frequently. And uh, yes, I mean, I'm, I've been very busy lately, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, give our viewers a kind of, if you can, briefly, just an inside look into your job. I mean, how close do you get? This is a very, very dangerous profession. Uh, these storms were massive today. Why do you do this? Well, I've, I've had a passion for weather. Me and, uh, as I said, my partner Frankie, we've both had a passion for weather since we were young. We love doing this. Uh, I love using social media as a tool, all platforms, to warn people and educate people with what knowledge I have uh, because I feel like it makes a difference, and if it does make a difference, then the mission is accomplished. And sometimes people tend to react different if they see a video of a tornado or a picture instead of a radar screen with a bunch of spilled paint on it, if that makes sense. Yeah. So if I can go out and capture those things and present it on social media to get people's attention, then that's what I'm here for, and that's what we enjoy doing. Yeah, well, I'm putting up our X-ray weather system. I'm not a meteorologist myself, so it's it's somewhat difficult for me to explain what we're seeing uh, on the radar and places all over the South and the Midwest today. Last question for you, Zach. Do you ever go back to these communities? I know uh, it's it's called storm chasing, but do you ever return? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was on the rolling for DF4 last Friday in Mississippi and was one of the first individuals to be in the We were one of the first people on down. We didn't leave the next day. We were there much across from the hill. Uh, and today, as we rolled into the community that we struck by the we did what we did the hill. Uh, and then we left once we felt like our job was done. And we continued taking the long doing our job. Yeah, you know, we have to return uh, and we try to do our best to help us. Zachary Hall, uh, we really appreciate your time. I know you've been all over the Southeast today, uh, so thanks for making some time for us. Uh, and stay safe out there, and we'll speak again. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you uh, for having me.
Breaking news on YouTube. Subscribe to ABC7 Chicago Eyewitness News. One tornadoes across the country since Friday, and we now know four of those happened in New Jersey. Well, tonight the cleanup continues. Eyewitness News reporter Kimberly Richardson has the latest on the damage in Jackson, New Jersey, and across the country. The severe weather system barreled through parts of New Jersey, officials Sunday confirming a tornado did touch down in Jackson Saturday evening. Pasquale saw and heard it coming. We went down the basement and you still hear it. It's like an airplane and something's going to come over your head. At one point, more than 9,300 people in that area were in the dark. With trees and power lines down, Jackson police had no choice but to declare a state of emergency. Take a look at this, even this 100,000 square foot dome, one of the largest of its kind in the country, couldn't hold up. The inflatable bubble of adventure sports and entertainment collapsed. The complex is not far from Six Flags Great Adventure and Safari, which is now temporarily shut down. It says for the safety of our guests and team members. Officials anticipate reopening Wednesday. Many here are picking up the pieces both small and large. Roof, siding, broken windows, everything outdoor living is done. Gotta start all over. No one was hurt in our area, but in parts of the South and Midwest, at least 26 people have died and dozens are in the hospital. Drone footage gives you an idea of what people are dealing with. The extreme weather sparked at least 50 tornadoes in just a two-day period. Here in Belvedere, Illinois, a concert was underway inside the historic Apollo Theater when the roof collapsed. Alex was standing right next to his father, Frederick. They laughed so fast, man. <laughs> they, they did raise me since I was two years old. Kimberly Richardson, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. social media video uh, of one of these funnel clouds uh, that came through Little Rock, Arkansas. I, I wanna put that up, let's watch this. That is a sideways rotation. That is a sideways rotation. Okay, so you can hear uh, that individual just kind of talking about the tornadic movements this is making. Uh, you can see there that that is shaping up, was shaping up to be quite a massive funnel cloud there uh, over parts of Arkansas there in Little Rock. Uh, we did hear from the Little Rock mayor on Twitter, Frank Scott Jr. saying at this time, we know 24 people have been hospitalized at Little Rock hospitals. We're not aware of any fatalities in Little Rock at this time. Property damage is extensive and we're still responding. That's gonna take us out now.
taking cover in the basement. Just minutes later, you hear the wind howling overhead. Eventually, though, the tornado moves on and you come up the staircase and there isn't even a back wall left. You step outside and this is what you see. Your community, your neighborhood in shambles. One man here in Sullivan, Indiana says that is what he experienced as what the National Weather Service says was preliminarily an EF3 tornado came through this community outside of Indianapolis. Wind gusts up to 155 miles per hour. Unfortunately, officials say three people lost their lives and now this community is bracing for another severe weather threat on Tuesday. Already, though, the mayor here says that recovery in this community is expected to take up to possibly years. Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog.